So we've been talking about one aspect of trigonometry, and that is using the Pythagorean formula. But it has its limitations as to what you can find. So remember that to use the Pythagorean formula, formula when you use it, theorem is the idea behind it. It doesn't really matter. You can use them interchangeably. That is only when you're dealing with the sides of a triangle. Right? So we have two sides. We're missing the third one, so we use the formula to find it. Yes? Yes. Okay. Well, today what we're going to do is we're going to look at the trig ratios, and these are used when you're dealing with an angle and sides. But the key there is the angle part. If you have an angle, then you're going to have to use a trig ratio instead of Pythagorean formula. All right? So you have to know the difference, and you have to be able to recognize it, but it's super easy to recognize. Okay? First of all, I want to remind you about what the word ratio means. It's one of those terms you're going to see a lot in your career, and you need to know anytime you see a ratio, that simply means a fraction. Because remember, a fraction is a comparison. You're comparing the top number to the bottom number. Right? This one compared to that one, and you write it as a, as a fraction. And what is the golden rule for fractions? You must always simplify. simplify. There you go. Right? Absolutely perfect. So, all right? So a ratio is simply a fraction. Okay? We also need to talk about a symbol for angles. Now, when we're dealing with sides, we usually use letters to represent those sides, A, B, and C typically, right? But when you're talking about angles, if you have an unknown angle, we use the Greek letter theta. Now, you'll see that it looks a little bit different than my theta, but that's okay. This is just the Greek letter theta, and the only reason it's used is to, delo to denote that the thing that we have is not a side, the thing that we're missing is an angle. It just okay. Oh you know, well, it's just a circle with a line through it, pretty much. It's really long. It's lo elongated. You'll see it written properly when we get to the things. Okay. Right. Just a zero with a line through. It's fine when you draw it. You'll see what it looks like when we look at the things. Okay. So, when do I use the Pythagorean formula? When I'm all de we're dealing with all sides. When do I use the trigonometric ratios? Angles and sides, right? You're going to have one angle and then some sides. All right. So let's talk about first, we're going to talk, we're just going to go to the Education Perfect and walk through there. They go through some stuff that's a little redundant, but it's all right. So, but keep this in mind. These are the big ideas for today. And then we'll introduce the trig ratios. That's the last thing we'll do. Then we're going to spend the rest of the term using them until it's time for the test. Yeah, your favorite. You don't need a test. You need a test. Come on. I don't know yet. Don't know yet. Okay, here we go. So remember, we talked about trigonometry. Trigonometry is just geometry with triangles. Literally, the word comes from the Greek. By the end of this lesson, you're going to be able to label the sides of a right angle triangle, right? You're going to be able to identify which trig ratio you need to use in order to find a particular angle, because it's different depending on the information they give you. And then you're going to be able to calculate those trigonomic ratios. Okay? All right. So if the angle we are looking for changes, so will the labeling of the triangle. So in this case, look at what's different here. We have A, H, and O instead of... A, B, and C, right? Also notice that we use capital letters here. Again, to denote that this is using the trig ratios, okay? So notice the difference here is we have this angle theta that we haven't had before. 
We didn't have that notation in the others. Instead, we just had, just had measurements on the sides. Well, one side will never change. That's the hypotenuse. Remember, the hypotenuse is always across from the right angle or it's the longest side, right? So always remember that the most important angle you can find when you're, when you're doing any of these is identify the hypotenuse. You always have to know what it is, where it is and what's, what's happening there. Now, the other two, A and O, stand for adjacent. You've probably heard that word before. If something is adjacent, that means it's right next to something. Adjacent, right, side by side. So looking, and these are always in comparison to your angle. So you see that this side touches your angle, doesn't it? The angle that you're me measuring. So therefore, it is the adjacent side. The hypotenuse, we've already got that out of the way. Always, always identify it first. And the other side, if you think about it, is opposite the angle. So you just need to get used to labeling things as adjacent and opposite. And of course, always the hypotenuse. Okay? So, yes? Yes, depending on where your angle is, it'll, it'll change. So like if you had the same triangle, but we were talking about using this angle. If this, was our, if this angle was our theta, then the opposite, uh, so, uh, then we can't, don't use that one. So if we're using this triangle and this was our theta, then the opposite would be over here. Hypotenuse would still be over there, and the one right next to the angle would be here. So they're gonna move around, depending on where your angle is, which angle you're measuring. Okay? It's good. So let's look at some of them and talk about how we're gonna label it. So label these sides by dragging and dropping. First of all, we always want to first talk about the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is which one? The long one on the right. So that's this one. Here's our angle. So this line right next to it is called the adjacent. adjacent. Good. And there's our angle. So the one straight across from it is the opposite. All right. No big deal. Words you're familiar with, ideas that are pretty easy. Always remember everything is based on the angle though. Label them by dragging and dropping. So, first of all, the most important one you can always do is the hypotenuse, which is the one right there, right? It's long, the longest slanted side or the one that's right across from the right angle. What's this one over here? The opposite. And this one down here? The adjacent, because it's right, ne because it's right next to your angle adjacent to your angle, okay? Opposite and adjacent. One more. Label those triangles. Which one's the hypotenuse? The, 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 bo the bottom one, yeah? Which one is, what's this one? Opposite. And this one? Adjacent. If you can do that, you can do trig. Trig. There is nothing, the, the hardest part is labeling them, I'm telling you, so it's super easy. Yeah. If you can find the sides, then you're in good shape. Oh, come on. So here we go. So the trigonomic ratios are just things that you're just going to put information into, and then you're just going to solve the equation to get an answer. So they think of it like a machine where you're just putting it into but we need to talk about the different ratios. There are three trigonomic ratios, and you can remember them if you remember the mnemonic device, Sokotoa, right? Everyone's heard this before. In the States, we call it Chief Sokotoa because we've got Indians that sound like an Indian name, but silliest, the sillier it is, the easier it is to remember. And if you think about so, that's S, O H, right? Ka and Toa. If you know the sides, then all you need to do is, is label which one you have, which things you have, and then you can know which trig function to use. Pardon me? Don't be scared. All right, so the first one is the sine of the angle, and that's not sin, it's sine. 
It's just an abbreviation. I don't know why. I don't know why they feel the abbre- need to abbreviate when it's only four letters, but they abbreviate it to three. Okay. Yes. So they're all three. Yeah. So this is the sign, and sign means you put the opposite over the what? Hypotenuse. I'm so confused. No. Okay. What should I write down? You should write this whole thing down. Sign, you write, should write down Sokotoa. And the sign is simply the opposite over the hypotenuse. The next one, the ka, is cosine. And it's simply the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And then finally, the last one is called tangent. And it's the opposite over the adjacent. So, ka, toa. Remember that, and you've got them. Okay? So katoa. Say it. So there you go. <laughs> if you're going to remember so katoa, then you, you can do any of these. What if I can't remember so Well, then you're in trouble. You can remember it. All right? So, so, opposite over what? Hypotenuse. Ka. Adjacent over hypotenuse. Toa, opposite over adjacent. Right? Okay? So you're just spelling them. So ka toa. Spelling them? Spelling. All right. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. I'm not changing it. So remember, the name sine, cosine, tangent, don't worry about those, what those words mean. You need to just simply be able to relate it to the specific ratio you're talking about. It's just the name. Okay? Yes. Okay. So don't worry about where those names come from. It's irrelevant to our study. If you want to look it up, you can certainly do so. Sokotoa, and he'll know exactly what you're talking about. Really? Yep. Really? Okay. So here we go. So here's a ratio. It's cosine. So, ka, or toa? Ka. 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 So it's what? A over H. A over H. See? You've got it. All you need to know. Ka is K- A over H. You don't think I know my ratios? There we go. Okay? All right. Sign. So. So. So what is it? O over H. O over H. Always. Never going to change. Yay. Yay? So Yay? Tangent. O over A. O over A. Boom. You're done. You know trig. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't check your answer. Okay. Right? Now, identify the trigonomic function we would use to find the angle. Well, here's our angle. We know opposite, and we know what? Toa. So that's toa. Tangent. So tangent. So you just use whichever one so you have. Okay, okay. Whatever you know, that's the one you have to use. So what one yeah. did we find? We just found yeah. A and O, right? Which one has an A and O? What's the one that has an A? Tangent. tangent exactly. There you go. So you just choose tangent. Yes, I'll check the answer. How do you say these points? Okay. All right. Here we go. A-H. Which one is that? Ka, so cosine. Yeah. Ah. Right? Ah, yes. Ah, cosine. Ah. Okay, good. H O. So. So sine. This is not too bad. Oh, no, super easy. Okay. All right. So now. Let's talk about how we can actually do the math with it. Because right now, all we've done is just say which, which trig function to use or trig ratio. Trig function, trig ratio, they mean the same thing. The ratio is just the, the OH, A, whatever. It's a function if you start using it. So it's, it doesn't matter. All right, so in this, in, so you can hear me say this in the right Yes, remember this whole section is all right angle triangles. Only right angles. Mm-hmm. And, the same with both and the same with these functions. All right. In this angle, right, we know, we know an angle. Do you see this time they didn't use theta because we know the angle, right? They only use theta when it's an unknown angle. Theta. 
theta, that little circle with a line through it. T-H-E-T-A, theta. 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 Now, then, theta. so we know the angle, okay? I know this long slanty side, which is the, called the what? The hypotenuse, right? So here's my angle that I'm using. I know the hypotenuse, and I know this side that's straight across from my angle, so what am I going to call it? Opposite. The opposite, oh. right? So I know the opposite and hypotenuse, so what am I using? So, well, just so, right? Okay. All right. So in other words, I'm using the sine for this angle. And it comes out as sine of my angle. Okay, hold on just a second. Sine of my angle. What's my angle? 30 degrees equals, what's my opposite? What's my hypotenuse? So there it is. Oh, so that's the answer? That's the answer. Um, this is a question. That is so easy. Yeah, y'all don't like easy things. You know how long your calculator? Yes. It and you'll, sign for sign tangent. Yes, and you'll be using those quite a lot. Oh we'll, we'll talk about it when we need it. Okay. Wait, Amy's going to have to take a photo. Can I take a photo of this? Yes, you may. So if you're trying to find out which trick function to use, make sure you label the triangle and then just write out the right word and it'll, tre it'll show you what one you need to use. Yeah? All right. Here we go. Yes. All right, guys, come on. Shh. All right. What's my angle? 20 degrees. This long side is the hypotenuse, but I don't know that value, do I? So am I going to use the hypotenuse this time? Nope. I do know the one straight across from it, which is called the opposite. And I know the one right next to it, which is called the adjacent. So I have TOA. So that's the tangent of, what's my angle? 20. 20 degrees, don't say just 20, 20 degrees, right? Is opposite over adjacent, so the opposite is? 91 over 250. And that's it, we don't have to do anything else. That's it. Yes. Yeah. If, if it's not simplified, Yes, if it wasn't simplified, you'd have to simplify it. This is my problem, I so much I can say. Put it in your calculator and hit simplify. Keep one. Okay? All right. Yes. I do want you to look at this one. This one, because the fraction was really ugly, they went ahead and changed it into a decimal. Now notice, shh, guys, come on. Now notice that when they did it, you got a different answer, but you need to round it. Okay. All right, so if it's an ugly fraction, you can change it to a decimal. Yes. 